Hello, hello, hello. A little testing. Okay, it's good to know it's working. Um, right. I guess I just thought I'd do a little audio description, just if, in case I say something interesting while drawing. Um, but yeah, I'm attempting to draw Makara Tours. And I guess I could talk a little bit about her as well. She is a really cool um, YouTube profile. All right, let's get started. Um, I've drawn some guidelines to help me keep everything in the correct proportions because my plan is what I like to do with a lot of my styles is, um, um, well, with my style of drawing, I like to recreate um, a pose from a photo because I'd say um, character drawing is my strongest point rather than backgrounds. It's something I should work on in the 2022 but I feel for the moment I'm happy with this way of working so if I um go on to um is that a good example um let me get up I can think of let me go in my folder up quickly I'll find an example um if I go on cards Oh, here's a good example. I done of um a friend and her boyfriend for a Christmas present. So um you can see the background is the normal picture, but I like to draw the char the characters, the the people within the image, like I will draw over them. Um so I like working in this style and I think that it will look really nice on this photo of Makara here. And uh, let's get started. Um, actually, let's draw one more guideline. Just got to draw her head. I mean, I might not follow these to the correct... I might not follow these, like, to a T, because I might like to exaggerate a few things. Like, the thing is, her body shape here is incredible. Like, this pose is so... It, it feels like it's all, it's animated already. It's just so dynamic and strong. Um, but there are elements that I would like to e exaggerate that, um, mostly her facial expression, I'd like to exaggerate a little bit. Also, I might change the position of the head a little bit, so it's facing side on, rather than upwards. But I'll see how I go. I'll see how I do go with the drawing. Okay, I'm going to shrink down my size of the pen. I'm going to shrink it down just a little more because it's quite a small... There we go, that's better. So, start with the face and start with a circle. And the head is facing upwards a little bit, so we can start drawing in the guidelines. And I'll see how this turns out. If if it doesn't work, then I can always like reposition the face. Um, yeah. And this is the way I like to draw heads, like very round, very f bubbly, fun. L they look like you can like a bouncy ball almost. So, and then she's got this lovely love heart shaped face. So I want to exaggerate that with the with the drawing okay and she's got her eyes then I go next to the eyes and she's got her eyes closed in this photo so I don't know whether mm, she looks a little bit sad I'm gonna redo those see what I can do Actually, let's try drawing the, the eyelid first. And I'm going to give her a little cat eye because she's got these big, beautiful eyes. This is just going to be me complimenting Makara for a good hour and a half. <laughs> Tune in. Nah, I like how those have turned out, but I'm just going to resize them. Because I don't think they work with the... There we go, that's... That's a lot better. 
then we can draw in her eyebrow. Nope, that's not how her nose looks. Um, I'm trying to think of... It's quite helpful having the photo as a reference because then I can figure out what shape to go off of. Um, uh, it's not that. It makes it look pointy. Um... Let's go, let's do it one more time. Let's see if I can do this right. Um, oh, that's, there we go. Yeah, third time's the charm. Um, right, I'm gonna just exaggerate her little lashes at the moment as well. I don't know whether, cause I have this um, signature with a couple of my OC designs, I like to give them like little under lashes. Um, let's see how it looks on Makara. Um, I think it looks cute, but she's known for her cat eyes, so maybe I should focus on doing that. So like, just doing a little, yeah, that looks, that looks nice. Do a little point. Right, and then she has a big smile on her face, so I want to capture that. And I guess a good tip that I can say is when drawing a mat, when drawing lips in a mouth, you want to draw the mouth first, so you want to get the shape down before you get the lips in. Because your mouth is, well, <laughs> the lips are being controlled by the mouth, so you want to draw that line first before you draw lips. Then, um, yeah, that's it. I just want to make it, I don't know whether to make it bigger, but then, oh. let's try that again, control T. Right, and then draw in the ear, just a cute little button there, keep it quite simple, quite simple shapes. Um, and then she has her hair, I'll just turn up the opacity a little bit more. Her hair's kind of tucked away, so maybe just a little bit just her fringe coming out a little bit. I do love this photo, it's like a little house on the prairie moment, it's just pretty in pink, so gorgeous. I wish I, <laughs> I wish I could pose like that. I could try, but it will not came up, come out the same. <laughs> Right, so I've got her hair in, let's do the hat as well. Actually, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cheat a little bit, because I don't know how to draw the perfect circle. So I'm just gonna, oh, it goes to show. There we go. And then we can exaggerate that just a little bit more there. Yeah. 
There we are, because we made the head bigger, so we're going to make the hat bigger as well. Right, so we can move on to the rest of the body. Um, I'm just going to work in different layers, so if I make a mistake, I don't have to erase everything. So I'll keep... Oh, good little tip, make sure you remember to name your layers, because mm. otherwise, if you're making all these layers, you might lose track. Right, and then let's call that layer body. Cool. Right, uh, let's tackle the body. Um, let's, I think, let's try, I'm going to kind of cheat again, but it's just such a good pose, like you don't want to, you don't want to go off, lose it in any way. So I'm going to draw a line of action in Kara's pose. There we go. Let's see what that was positioned. That was positioned just matching her eye. So let's put that there. Cool. So that's her line of action. Um, and it's just so, it's such an exaggerated pose already that the line just looks right for the body shape. So we can start adding in the rest of the body, add in the neck. And um, what um, I like to do with my with my drawings is um, I like to draw over the the character in the photo and then put them back into the photo so they stand out from the background. Um, so they're just this little cart like a little cartoonified character. So that really stands out. Um, that's <laughs> it's all about exaggeration, guys. <laughs> Uh, right, and then draw in the rest of the body. So just draw up, following that guideline. So her, her, her waist, her waist, yeah, her waist comes to here. And then let's have a look at that collar. I think that's a, yeah, it's like a little dicky bow collar like that. I don't know if you can hear that. It sounds like the ocean, but that is my computer working so hard not to crash. <laughs> and speaking of crashing, and a good little tip, I'm just going to remember to save so I don't lose any of the work. Um, right, so the body, that's the top, and then we can do the rest of the body. So that's one leg drawn in with the line of action. What we're going to do is add in the second leg. And I'm just going to draw a line, draw a guide following that leg. Because I want to keep it straight. Because it's such a nice dynamic, dynamic pose. And then I'm just going to merge that into the body, the body line. Right, and then we can start adding in the, so the legs are covered up by the skirt mostly, but it's important to consider drawing in the legs so that we can follow where the material will lay on the body, because we can tell um, the wind is picking up the dress here, 
so we've got this nice flow here and then it carries on through the, through the skirt but then the flow stops here because it's following the leg so we can tell the legs gonna go there right. I'll just remove those lines because we don't need those anymore <sighs> I'm drawing her quite thick because she's a very slender girl um, but that's a very thick thigh um, right let's I'll keep it in for the moment if if we need to change anything we can always go in with the walk tool and fix it um, then let's go in with the other leg see what I mean <laughs> I'm drawn this one a bit thinner but it should be a bit thicker because it's coming forward a little bit more so let's try yeah that looks a bit better and then let's carry on with the rest of the legs And this is how I like to draw a calf. It's kind of like kind of keep the straight line and then follow in with a back curve line. And then we come down to the foot. Oh, I've kind of made that a bit too long. So I'm going to shrink that down just a smidge. there actually that looks a lot better that looks like it yeah that look so i'll probably have to shrink this leg down because this one looks a lot better on the body and then drawing the shoe she's got a heel on so i want to exaggerate that and i can't tell if it's a i think it's a heel or is it a wedge I think it's a heel because it will go, I think a heel goes with the outfit, like the the period she's trying to represent because they wouldn't have wedges back in the little house on the prairie days, whenever that took place. Um, yeah, so then we want to draw in the wedge, no not the wedge, the, um, the lining of the shoe. Cool, so that's and then just draw a few lines to represent the, the laces. Yeah. And then we'll go in with this leg. I'm going to keep the size for the minute just so I can draw in this one correctly. And then we can use the command tool as well to stretch it. So it looks like the, the legs coming out was moving backwards. So we get that nice stretch. There we go. And then let's draw in the other shoe. kind of broken her leg a little bit so her knee goes there and then that's the way her calf goes Oh, I think I've drawn that a little bit too big, so I'm probably going to have to shrink that down a little bit. Right. 
Let's go ahead and shrink that down. So let's join those up again. There we are. So that's her her legs added in. Um, I'm just going to draw in her. I'll draw her skirt first because that seems to be behind the arms here. So I'm going to draw. Follow them get a flow for the dress where it's kind of falls down here um, it stops at her knee here so we kind of want to fold it in on itself and then it flows back up this way And she's got these nice um she's got these nice little ruffles on the end of them so I want to kind of pick those up as well yeah. I'll just draw them in roughly for the minute but we get a feeling of where these ruffles are coming from. I love to have a skirt like this. Um, I need to try and thrift a bit more because that's what Makara took. So um, I haven't really explained um, what she does. Um, she's a YouTuber, Makara Tours, who um, does sewing. I won't say sewing tutorials because she just sews and doesn't like teach you a lot. She does teach you tips and bits like that. But she doesn't go into every single detail, which I kind of like. She like splices together sewing tutorials with her life, so it feels like half a vlog and half a tutorial, which I quite like. And she's got this kind of... It sounds bad when I say it, but I don't mean it as bad. But she's got this chaotic style of editing that just tickles me pink. And I find, like, really funny. Um, my boyfriend finds her funny too, like, um, and usually the stuff I watch he'll roll his eyes at, but he really enjoys Makara as well, like, sometimes she'll, she'll say something random and it makes him laugh, like, I think one of the examples I can think of is, like, measure it to the size of a baby koala, <laughs> it's like, it's just so random, it's just the things that pop in her head sometimes, it's brilliant. Right, um, so that's the skirt done. Um, actually, I'll add some of the lines in because otherwise I'm going to lose them otherwise. So that's the main line there. And they've got nice folds in the lines here as well. Oh, I just realised that my tan is set. Plug that in. Very important. There you go. <laughs> now it says apes. <laughs> it drops so quickly, that's why I've got to be careful nowadays with my charger. Laptop's getting old. I'm not going to say replace it though, because. She's working, knock on wood, she's working just fine. Saying that, <laughs> I'll save it again. <laughs> right, so I've done the body, um, and we can do the arms. I'm going to make a new layer for the arms just in case 
I make any accidents, but that's what that's what the undo button's for. So let's draw in a little shoulder, a little deep shoulder action. And then I'm like the legs, I'm gonna draw a line first to represent the the arms. And now I'm going to do a nice line of action for her arm as well, because I think that will look really nice having it flowing like that. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just thinking the hand is quite complicated here, so I'm just going to quickly follow, because hands are my weakness. I'm not the best at drawing hands, so I'm just going to draw over the fingers just so I can get a basic idea where to draw them when I drew the line art. And there we are. And then we can add that into the drawing. Sorry, I'm not talking so much here. I'm just drawing in the arm. Um, I've kind of broken it a little bit, but I'm just following that nice um, line of action. And then we can draw in the other arm. I think that I'd say this is my favourite arm because it doesn't have a hand to draw. <laughs> And it's got a nice sense of weight to it as well, like you've got the straight line at the top here, but then you can see where the where it drops off the muscle. So we've got this nice arm coming out. And then it comes back in on itself and sharpens. Drawn that a little bit too high, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to warp that and reposition it. Okay, let's see if I can line. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to line that up. So let's take a step back. Just gonna turn off this layer and look at the portions. Um, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with how this has turned out. Um, I think because of the image, because I have drawn it free a little three D, but it still has a flat element to it. So when you see it flat on, it does kind of look a little bit off, like this leg even though we know it's shorter because it's in the back, it's foreshortening. Um, it's a bit of foreshortening that um, it's going to be shorter than this leg. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stretch it just a smidge, just a little, just to see if we can fix it. And that will be on the body layer.
Just a little. Not enough to spook anybody. And then... Oh, I forgot. Oh, no. <laughs> I forgot to draw her sleeve. <laughs> right, so let's draw in the sleeve. Nice puffy sleeve. And then it cuts off right there. There we go. Right, so we can move that. I like it. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Pat on the back. Yeah, that came out really nicely. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the guidelines and then let's put this in a folder so everything stays together now. Control T. And then I'm just going to shuffle it over, see if it covers... Ooh, okay, we might have a problem. <laughs> Um, it covers up a bit of the body, but not all of the body. So, because what I like to do is draw so it covers the illustration, but then so I might have to do some warping to get everything. Covered. I could also use um, the stamp tool, but I need to figure out how that works. Um, but let me try and do some altering before. Go. And then I'm gonna walk her body, try and Um, actually I don't think it's going to work I'll try I think I'm going to try the stamp tool and see if I can erase erase a bit of her um, if it doesn't work I can always just reuse the just have her on a plain background or try and replicate the background in the future um, but let's move on to the line art I think for the line art um, it's going to be a lot of me um, it's going to be a lot of me undoing, redoing, and probably making weird noises whilst drawing. So what I'm going to do is do a zoom, I'm going to do a speed up of the, of the inking process, and then you can join me back on with the colour process. So I'll speak to you guys in a bit. guys um just got back from well I had a little lunch break and then I finished off the inking so this is how the ink has come out I think it looks pretty good so um, next we'll go on to the coloring and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select the body layer and then Select it. I'm going to select around the body. And then select inverse when I double click. And then I'm going to start a new layer, which I'm going to colour in. I'm just going to start off with a basic white. 
And as you can see, it's filled in all the colour. It's filled all the space in with ink, with colour. Now I can start adding the colours down. Um, right, I'm going to get a copy of the, of the image up. And actually, I'm going to... Usually I just turn off on and off the layers, but since the image is... She's a little bit smaller in this image. We can shuffle her off to the side. And then I'll take away that part of the Im take away this part of the image so that it's not blocking the illustration. Cool. Right. So we've got that. And then next we can move on to the colouring. Now I'm going to start a new layer, go into Clipping Mask, and then just start selecting colours off her body. Um, usually they come off a little bit darker, so I'm just going to go into... Oh yeah, um, I guess if anyone knows how to fix this, like take it back to the original swatches, because for some reason it just reset itself and changed only to that so um, if anyone knows how to fix that like change it back to this colour swatch um, I really appreciate that thank you but I'll just have to use this for the meantime I'm going to tone down the skin tone and I think yeah she was on holiday at the time so she was really tanned I think she was, I can't remember. And then get the hat colour. Just rub that bit out. And then, so what you can see from the images, I'm putting down the basic skin, basic tones of the the dress and the body and the skin. So just starting a new layer every single time, so I don't lose sight of it. So that's the white top, and then I'm going to add the pink. Usually I like to draw around the hands and stuff, but I think just make sure I'm not going over for time. Oh, we've... I'll go back in with the rubber and take it out. Just be more careful. There we are. Oh. Yeah, that looks good. 
And then we can do the shoes next. Very nice cover. Doesn't need much changing, just a smidge, just to make them look a little darker. And then colour them in. And then I want to do her hair next. I'm just finish colouring off the boots. Go in and try and get a blonde hair colour. Although it doesn't really come out blonde here, so I'm going to have to alter the tones a little bit and see if I can get her, her blonde. Yeah, that's good. Finish colouring in the solid colours, and then we can go in with the lips as well. And it looks like um, she's just got like a hint of pink. So what I'm going to do is push down the skin tone, so we get this nice pinky, pinky tone. And zoom in, shrink down the brush size. Coming off a little bit too red, so I'll turn it down a bit. But what we can do is um, go over it with the skin tone again, and then try and there we are. So go over it with a layer of that with the skin tone, and then change the opacity down, and then just change it to which one you like. I think I'd say forty or. 30. Um, let's go with 30. I think 30 looks the best. Um, it's a little hard to tell from here. If she's got well, um, if she's got like a full face of makeup on. I mean, we could see like she's got a cat line. Uh, yeah, a uh, cat eye line. So um, what I'm going to do is tone it down. Oh no, what have I done? Let's reset that. If this ever happens to you, you accidentally reset the workplace, you can arrange the workspace to essential to painting. There we go. That's better. All going to default to that. There we go. That fixed it. Right, and then. So where was I? Oh yes, I was going to do her, so I've done her lips, I was going to do her, her, her eyes. So I'm just going to turn those down a little bit, turn up the shade. So it kind of looks like there's a shadow on her eye, but it, if it comes off too dark you can always play with the opacity, and I think, I think 50 looks good. I'm going to go with 50. And that's all the solid colours down. So usually I would stop here or I would continue to add more colours as I go. Um, but I'd like to add a bit more detail to it. So um, try and make the skirt look like a flowing skirt, like adding shadows and highlights to it. So it looks more like the material uh, comes across. And then I can colour in the line art as well. So it blends in together, so it looks like a completed piece. And um, yeah, so I'm going to do that. So yeah, the t it takes 10 minutes to colour it in, but then it will take probably another hour to get all the shadows done, so I better get started. <laughs> um, yeah, I think what I'd like to start on first is 
probably getting the skirt down. So I'm going to go over where the skirt was. And then just go over the layer. So go above the layer and then we're going to highlight the pink and tone it down to a darker tone. And then we're going to focus on the shadow in the skirt. And then what I'm going to do is change my brush so it's not a harsh brush, it's going to have some soft tones to it. And I like using this brush as well because it has it as a little point to the end so it feels sharp. So I'm going to turn that up to 20 because I feel that's a good size to work off of. Then we can turn on the opacity as well so we can play with how we apply them, apply the shadow. So let's start applying it. Lacing details here, and I'm not going to worry about going over the lines just yet. I can always go in and rub them out when need be. Just going to roughly apply the shadow. Usually I'd listen to music as well when I'm working, but I don't want to play it just in case it distracts me from talking or anything. I guess I could always put a headphone in, but then I'd probably go quiet. I don't want to do that. Not, not for you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a shadow around the belt. I kind of, yeah, she does have a little belt, but it's just a bit more detailed, but I'm just going to keep it simple and keep it to one line. So that's a few lines of shadow added. I'm going to add a little bit in the middle.
Yeah, I'm just going to rub out the lines here now so it doesn't incorporate with the rest. And I think, yeah, and if I turn off the layer, you can see how much the shading has made a difference. Like, it makes the, the skirt really pop out. It just gives it more of a 3D effect. Right, I'm just going to complete the, the ruffles ruffles of the, the, the skirt. The, no, they're not ruffles. Um, are they ruffles or are they pleats? I guess they're either. Yeah, ruffles or pleats. Makara tours, please correct me. <laughs> sure, no. That'd be cool if you watch this video. Yeah. She does. I don't know who wants it and watch me draw for how long is this video going to be? Over an hour? Over an hour of rambling on how to draw the characters. <laughs> well, I guess if people are interested, they're interested. Like, can have a cup of coffee, watch it on their lunch break, listen to it while they're working. Anything. Right, so that's the skirt all added in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the blender tool and then I'm just going to go in and smooth out. Smooth out the, the shadows that I've applied so that they go down more, they blend in nicer, nicely, <laughs> nicely with the dress. Once that's all applied, just going to get the rubber and rub it out at the bottom where it went over the lines. And yeah, that's the shadow on the skirt. Um, I'm going to go in with some highlights as well because it kind of gives off a sheer appearance. I think that's the right word. So where the light's hitting it. I'm going to try and highlight that. Lighting the
above the shadow. Just gonna go back in with the rubber around the hair, so it overlays it again. Um, but everywhere else is fine. And then I usually I would blur it, but I think um, just to make it blend in with the dress a little more, I can also use the smudge tool just to go around the edges of where I've applied the highlight, so it just blends in nicely with the dress. So it doesn't look so blocky. Then what I do is I'll apply the smudges, and then once all the smudges are down, I can go in with the blender again just to smooth it out. So because you can see the brush I'm using has um kind of a a charcoaly texture to it, or a yeah I'd say it looks like charcoal. Um, so I can, now that that's all applied, I can go in with the blur tool and just smooth everything out to it all and just follow the flow of the skirt as well so it just matches up and it just looks, it just blends in so nicely, getting a little bit mesmerised, <laughs> but yeah that just looks and then blend in the bottom and that's just it the highlights and the shadows compared to when you turn them off compared to a plain old skirt it, the difference is night and day it just makes it pop it looks great um so hopefully i can apply the rest of the detail in there and I've kind of lost track of what I was drawing because I'm a genius that way. So I'm going to name the layers that I've applied. So that's the top. I found, I found what I was looking for, great. So, and those are the shoes. Mm, that was the skirt, skirt highlight. So this one is skirt shadow, I'm just going to call it shad, and then that was the skirt layer. Cool, so I think, oh, have we got other layers, what were these ones down here, oh was that the, that was the eyes, so I'll call that eyes. And then that one's lips. I think these are both lips, so we can both. Yeah, so I'm going to merge them because I don't think we're going to. We'll see where we go with it, but I don't think I'm going to be touching the lips for a while. And it's going to be the same colour anyway. Right, so I'm going to move on to the top next. And I'm going to call it top shag. Now this is going to be interesting because it's kind of like this, there is a lot of shadow in this top so I'm going to try my darn best see what I can do. Um, right, so this layer is over the top so this layer is over the skirt so I've got to be careful when I go near it. This, um, actually this could be quite simple because um, there is already detail in the dresses, the top, 
it's just the I want to capture this detail in the in the in the top where it ruffles from her chest. Apply the same shadow around here as well. It looks a little bit blocky to begin with. We can play with the opacity and the. We can play around with the opacity and see how it goes from there. And then I'd like to introduce the, actually I'm going to add another shadow layer and I'm just going to make it darker because there are quite heavier shadows in the top to the side and I want to try and capture that. Um, and it's kind of... Here, lower. And then I'm just going to go in with the rubber so I can rub out where it's applied itself through the layers. But then also um, it can be handy to show tones and highlights so you can see there was a, so I'm going to go on the same tool for the rubber and um, we can see those little highlights poking through so I'm going to try and highlight those. Right, and then let's use the blur tool again just to blend them in nicely. And then we can change the opacity down just to a smidge. Just to 50, I think we'll do. And shadow on the top, let's see. I think um, the shadow's not really coming off the way I like it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on a sharper brush and then it can make the shadows come across a lot harsher. And that sounds like a bad word to use but um, to describe it but I think because um, they come off quite dark the way the light hits it, it shows the shadows contrast against the contrast against the top so I want to try and highlight that. So I'm just going to be careful, adding little strokes as I go. And then add a little shadow here. Mm. 
and just blend them in lightly. Yeah, I think that works a lot better. Um, I'm just going to see if the opacity, because it does come off a little grey. So I just want to turn the opacity down and try and blend it in. Yeah, I think 60 works. 60 is a good tone. I just want to add a little bit of shadow to the collar because it kind of contrasts with the the rest of the, the kind of contrast with the rest of the, the top. So I'm going to add a little bit of shadow. There we are. I think that looks good. So I think, oh, actually, before we move on, I can colour in the lace. And that's that layer, I think. It's not turning off the bad. Um, let's go in. Oh, wait, no, that's laces. That's why it's not turning off. Top lace, that's what I want. So I'm going to add a clipping mask to that. There we go, and then I'm going to change the colour to a light grey. Then let's play around with the tones a little bit. So we'll get that white that we had. And then just play around with it so it's a lighter grey. Well, that's too light. Okay, so I'm just darken it down a little bit. I think that looks a lot better. Um, I think I'm just going to add the body layer just to overlap it. Body skirting. Cool. So that blends in really nicely. So we can move on to, let's move on to the, the hat. I think the hat will be fun to do. So I'll get what I'm going to do is um, there'll be little lines so to replicate the the threading of not threading um I guess cross hatching is the word to represent the cross hatching so if we get on our same um maybe a sharp pen will do so we'll find the hat layer There we go, and then we'll just make sure we're above that. And then turn it down to a 7. I think that's maybe just a little thinner. Let's try a 4. Or f yeah, let's try 4. Yeah, that's good. So what we're going to do is we can kind of see how the threading follows around the hat. So what I'm going to do is kind of almost like what Vincent van Gogh would do. He would add little brush strokes and they would build up and up. So they just make add all this detail in. A bit of this I mean, I think yeah, I'd say it's a mango, because it's not um oh, the other artists that did the Day in the Park painting all made out of dots. So it's not really dots, it's lines. But yeah. I think I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'll probably speed up through this bit because this is going to take a little longer, just a little longer. And I think I'm going to do a think 
because I don't want to... As much as I love making my work really detailed, I don't want to spend too long on it. Because I want to try and keep it, my work to under an hour's work. That I want to keep up this pace. So what I'm going to do is do a duplicate layer of these lines and do them in a thicker colour, for um, a darker colour for the shadow. And then I can move those to the side. So. And then I'm going to take that layer Take that layer and then I'm going to add a clipping mask and make it a darker tone. <laughs> Sorry, dropped my pen. <laughs> All over the place. You and my massive elbows. Right. Let's shuffle that. No, that's not that layer. Um, let's so I'm going to shuffle that down. And I'm just going to add the highlight layer so it's over the top. And yeah, we get this nice. Now with all those lines, it looks like cross-hatching, which looks really cool. So we've added detail to the skirt, detail to the top, detail to the hat. Um, so I think next we can do the either the hair or the shoes. I think let's do the shoes because then it will complete all the clothing. And I'm guessing that's a... Oh, let's name these layers hat, cross, hatch, shack, and then hat, cross, hatch, light. And then we're going to find the shoes and then colour those in. I think they're quite plain. So I think we'll just have to add like little details to them. So like focus on where the shadow hits the shoe and um, highlight. So it's going to be quite simple, but I think it will pull the whole look together. So we'll colour in the heels because they'll be underneath, so they'll be the darkest. And then the inside of the shoe will be dark too. And then it's kind of got this kind of shadow here that passes on up the shoe. Now. 
Um, yeah, let's leave it for now with that. And then I'm going to start a new layer to apply the shadow at the top of the shoe. So it's quite dark, isn't it? And then go in with the rubber. And the shadow on the side of the shoe. So I'll highlight that. On. And then let's call that shadow shoe one. And then shadow shoe two. And then we're going to add the highlights. And then I'm going to go in, grab the light brown, and then move it to a high, lighter brown. See where the highlights they hit on this side of the shoe and just at the tip of the shoe, so kind of like that. And then, kind of the same, you can see the highlights on the shoe, highlights on the side, and just a few to the corner as well. that's the shoes all detailed in and then we can add detail to the into the hair so that'll be fun and get that hair color and then i'm going to tone it down so we get a nice light brown that we can add tones to the hair and so we'll find the hair layer which will be shadow. I just realized I didn't add any highlights to the t shirt, so let's try doing that. I'm going to add go to pure white and try adding that onto our top and see if that makes it pop a little bit more. So we can add a little sheer to here. Ooh yes, this is working. This is working very nicely. It really does make a difference when you apply all the all the details like stuff like Highlights and shadows. Then apply it a little bit here. Let's go into swatches again. And we've got that nice hair colour. And then I'm going to go on a harsh line. And go on to three. Then we've got nice thin lines.
And then we're going to find the hair layer. Okay, I've had it. Oh, I see what I've done. Okay. It's not the end of the world. I've added the lips layer, merged it with the hair layer. But that's not the end of the world. I'll be able to keep them separate. Um, so let's apply shadows to the hair. And pretty much when applying hair, it's um same as the clothes, you apply the shadows, apply the highlights and when you apply it you should um follow the flow of the clothing or the hair. So that's what will help it look. It's most natural. Yeah, let's go a little bit darker and add some more darker tones so we can see And then let's go for some lighter hair. Light hair. And then I think let's go with some pure white because then we can play with the opacity of it. And it gives this nice sheerness to the hair. Just apply that where the light would be hitting her. So it's hitting her top fringes. then that just looks all blends together so it just helps if I turn off all the layers it looks flat and stands out from the rest because it's not blended so then you turn on those layers it's just all marries in these colors marry together and just really pop and yeah it just really comes together nicely so I think next will be the skin tone so what we can do here is collect that skin tone we have from the body and apply it to apply where we see shadow onto the body. That's this blending skin tones, and then I can apply some tones around her face as well. 
Um, so she's got this nice, just rub that out where I went over. So she's got this nice light hitting her from the left in her face. So you kind of want to highlight that and how it hits this side of the face. So we've got these nice tones playing and then we can just tone those down. Let me turn that down to, let's see, if, I think, yeah, if we turn it down to 50, or let's try a little lower, let's try 33. Yeah, I think that looks really nice. Um, yeah, uh, so that's the rest of the body. I think also just to give it some give it some life. I think we can give her some rosy cheeks as well. So just so it looks, even though I think she's not wearing makeup, just adding like a little pop of colour to the cheeks. It's really going to pull it together. Now, that's very bright, very snow white. But what I'm going to do is just blend it. Blend the colours. And then change that opacity down. So I'm going to see how 10, 10 looks really nice. Um, let's see if, yeah, over 10 I think it looks too heavy. So we'll keep it at 10. And yeah, that just stands out on the cheeks it really pops like if we were to remove it it just yeah looks plain but when we apply it it just really comes together so that's all the coloring done for the full body i'm going to then move on to the i'm going to move on to the onto the line art coloring yeah right now it's recording um yeah so this is um the line art coloring i'm doing now um i thought i'd do try something different and record the audio separately so i can watch the the, the recording back of the drawing that i've done and so yeah i'm just coloring in all the lines and and i think it helps blend ma marry the the two the cartoon and the photo together so I think it looks really nice it adds packs a punch and yeah that's um my drawing of my carer I hope you enjoyed it and well done if you managed to watch all one hour and 30 minutes of this video um uh, I'd like to try and do this more in the future and maybe try more speed drawings or try to um, do longer videos and have topics of discussion to talk about so if people would be interested please let me know and um, I'd really like to try it and yeah the new thing for 2022 I'm gonna draw more and um, post more so yeah I'm really looking forward to this and here's the uh, breakdown of all the layers so this is the rough and the line art and then followed by all the colouring with the solid colour. And I did contemplate on whether I wanted solid colour or line art colour, because I think both look really nice. And that's the final outcome. Yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.